Hello? Does this work? Okay, that's very good for an audio talk for the, the sound system to work. So, And that works as well, because I'm going to be basically making all your eardrums bleed for the next hour, if that's okay. Um, and if you're already asleep, uh, you're going to be awake by the end of it. So my name's Andy. Um, I'm going to be talking for the next 40-ish minutes or so about audio mixing in uh, Unity, uh, which is a very good topic in the morning because it gets people to wake up. Um, my German is quite nine. Um, I only know uh, beer, uh, danke, and I did know what cheers was, but I forgot. Uh, Prost. Prost. Okay, and someone said that's all you need to know in German, and then you can get by, right? Is that okay? Yeah. Groovy, right. So clearly the best people didn't go to the keynote, they came to this talk instead. Awesome. So uh, my name's Andy, uh, this is me cosplaying as Mario. Um, I, uh, yeah, my, my parents were like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be Mario. So they dressed me up as Mario for like five years. And um, uh, I, I showed that photo to someone from Intel, and they said, I still program on that keyboard. So by that, you can sort of guess how old I am, or how old he was. So I'm a Unity evangelist. I work at a company called Unity Technologies. And we make a thing called Unity. It's kind of uh, cultish, I guess. Um, People don't really know what an evangelist is. I don't even know, and I've been doing it for over two years. But basically, um, I get a lot of the goodies and the tools and the features that Unity are working on and cooking up in the lab in Copenhagen. And I basically show them to people either at a conference like this, to one person, to a thousand people, um, in a bathroom, on a plane, it doesn't really matter. To a dog, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, I even had a dog came to my talk and he sat at the front and watched the whole thing and loved it and then barked. So yeah. So if you are working on a game, planning to work on a game, have already made a game, uh, thinking about making a game or whatever, just send them to me. You can send them to me via email, but I'm really bad at email. I'm much better at Twitter, where I just sort of post pictures of dogs and stuff. But yeah, send me games, I'm happy to play them um, and sort of give you feedback or let you know what Unity thinks and stuff. So yeah. So I'm going to be talking about audio and Unity. And the reason I'm going to be talking about audio rather than big flashy graphics or this rock looks realistic because it's five million polygons or something like that is because audio is often one thing that a lot of people don't really think about in games. And whenever I go visit a game studio in um, anywhere in Europe, I always say, like, what's your development schedule? What's your process? And they say, well, we kind of come up with the idea, and then we make a prototype, and then our artists start making the proper art, and our programmers start programming the proper code, and then eventually, um, we have the game, and then we kind of shove audio in in the last two days, and then we ship the game, and the audio is kind of just, just, just added on the end. And this upsets me, and it upsets a lot of people, because audio is such a big part of all like, the biggest games. Like, would Hotline Miami be Hotline Miami without the, the soundtrack? Would Super Meat Boy not be Super Meat Boy without the, like, and, like, the little sound effects when you hit walls and stuff? So it's a really super important part. And, uh, this upsets me and it upsets a lot of people at Unity, which is why we invested heavily in uh, new audio tools that allow audio developers and designers to have more interaction with how audio is reacting to certain elements of the game. So I actually really, really don't like PowerPoint. Um, so I'm actually going to do a lot of stuff in editor with a pre-made game and basically show mixing lots of different audio, making gunshots sound like bubbles and do all sorts of really cool stuff very, very quickly. Um, so whenever I do a talk, I like to find out a bit more about the people I'm talking to. And clearly, we've got like a thousand people here, so this is pretty cool. So um, put your hand up if you're a programmer, or you write code, copy-paste code from online. Um, OK, cool. Uh, put your hand up if you're a uh, 3D artist. Wow, no one. Put your hand up if you're a 2D artist. Put your hand up if you're a UI artist. Holy smokes. OK, put your hand up if you're an audio person. Okay, this is, oh, what? so I have a theory that whenever there's an audio person in the games industry, they have a beard, they play in a band, and they love Metallica. That's kind of like the, the global standard for musicians. So you've probably grown a beard at some point, or you haven't grown it yet. It's one of those two things, right? No. No Metallica. You let me down. <laughs> okay, Slayer? No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, put your hand up if you work in Q&A. Technically, everyone should put their hands up, but... Okay, never mind. Uh, put your hand up if you have no idea what video games are, you're just sitting at this hotel and saw a bunch of people walk in the room and thought this might be quite cool. No one. Okay, that's awesome. I, yeah, sweet. So, audio in Unity. Put your hand up if you know what Unity is. Okay, cool. So, you don't really need to know what Unity is to follow along this talk. I'm going to be showing some, uh, lots of Unity in the editor, though, but I'm going to break it down as simple as possible. 
So uh, older audio in Unity 4. So Unity 4 had uh, kind of very primitive audio. So you could do really advanced things like play, pause, and stop. Yeah, really groundbreaking, right? Um, you had a limited sort of different filters and effects. You didn't re couldn't really control groups. So if you had a thousand dogs in your game of different breeds, you couldn't say all dogs have an echo effect or all, all enemies in your game sound like you are, um, uh, distort their voices or something like that. You couldn't really do that. It's a pain in the butt. Um, most of the tweaking is done in the assets, so people were like, oh yeah, I have to like go into another program, like tweak this, go back in, it's okay, go back, tweak this, and that, it's only a couple of seconds, but like that does build up over like a full day, or like a full production cycle of like a year or something. And it wasn't visual, like you had to write lots of code, and there wasn't really anything to show what was being played, when, where, and, and how it's being played. So there's a couple of things that we needed to fix. Um, so yeah, more organization, more visuals, extended effects, control lots of effects together. You need to be able to control this by script, so I'm going to show like a health bar, and as my player uh, gets hurt, it distorts all the audio for the whole game a bit more in, in really, really simple one line of code. And you need to keep the existing concepts, so we still needed to keep sources in Unity basically emitting sound and listeners like receiving that sound. We still need to keep that, because people get really angry when we change any of the fundamentals of Unity. So this is difficult. So. I guess in Unity 4, you'd have all these audio sources, and they all just filter into this one point. And you had this really horrible thing, like if 400 audio sources are playing at the same point, it had like little scratches, like a record scratch, like in one of the terrible like American uh, trailers when someone tells a really bad joke. So yeah, you had sort of that, and it was kind of really, really bad. So if you wanted to apply an echo to everything, you had to apply it to all the things. It wasn't really nice. Um, so in Unify, we changed this. We basically said, uh, let's create something that fits in the middle. So we create an audio mixer. I can use this laser point. Yeah. So we create this audio mixer that basically fits into the middle of that process. So rather than everything feeding in from uh, like all channeling in and it's kind of like a pain, it basically comes into this mixer. The mixer then mixes it. It, it, it controls it. It changes it. It manipulates it, distorts it, has lots of effects, and then it passes the audio listener. So it's a lot, it's a lot kinder. So, for example, if you wanted to um, say, like, the sound effects of an enemy roaring, like, and, or the player saying something like, ah, um, you basically can apply that effect or apply lots of things to that one channel or one, that one group. And you don't have to go in and make all a thousand dogs sound like uh, mutant dogs or something. You can just apply it to the concept of dogs, and then it will apply it like so. Super nice and simple. That's my, my uh, art that I put together in paint best art tool ever. So yeah, so we've got the mixer interface, which is a new thing, which I'll show quite a lot. Rather than me going through, and I'm kind of running out of time, I'm just going to show it. So yeah. So here we have is uh, Unity. So I've got a really, really simple game. Everyone's earbuds are now going to be in pain. Sorry. So really simple game, uh, which you've probably seen before. It's got, obviously, background music that's playing. You can shoot. It sounds OK. Uh, I can shoot enemies. And when I get hit, it... So yeah, that's, that's, that's fairly standard. It's a simple game. There's no audio mixing involved. And there's a couple of things I don't like. One thing is that when a sound effect is being played, um, it doesn't really have an emphasis or an impact. I could make it louder, but that's actually really bad technique because it just sort of like... Uh, uh, ruins the quality and things like that. So what I want to do is I want the background music to actually dip underneath it. So if you played something like Fallout or uh, Skyrim or something, and you go and talk to a character, the background music kind of goes and it fades down and ducks in the background and then comes back in. Now, programming this, of course you could do this, but audio developers don't really like writing any code or looking at code at all. So we made sort of like a really quick ducking system. The other thing is, when I'm walking around and stuff, and I shoot, when I get hit by the enemies, you can't really tell when audio is playing. So. So you can hear yourself being hit, but you can't really see, am I being hit at this point? I want to tweak it. I want to change it. Um, the third thing I don't like is um, that's probably the most pathetic gunshot I've ever heard. It sounds like a pea shooter. So we obviously need to change that and tweak that. Now, I could just take that sound effect and put it into like Pro Tools or something and, and add loads of effects on, but I don't really want to do that. I just want to sort of do it all in Unity and add some simple things. So we need to make this more visual. And this is the most boring bit of the whole talk, by the way. Then when we actually get to the audio stuff, it's much more fun. So what we des uh, designed and created is an audio mixer panel at the bottom. So the audio mixer basically allows you to visualize and sort of see different groups. So if I add a new mixer, um, what's German for audio? 
Does anyone here speak German? Ton? Like that? Ton? Okay, you say so. <laughs> Ton? Yeah. So we have here the, a, a mixer. And what a mixer is, is it's basically a, a collection of groups. So it's like when you create a folder and you put files inside that folder. It's kind of the same thing. Now, this mixer is going to have all the audio channeling into it and controlling it. And you can actually make multiple mixers, and you can nest mixers as well. I'll explain that a bit later on. But having different mixers means you could have a mixer for, let's say, a different room for different ambience. You could have a mixer for different sort of characters. You could have a mixer. In this case, we just got a mixer for like our whole game. I'm keeping things super simple before we get into Really, really complicated stuff. So we create this mixer. Um, we have a thing called snapshots, which basically I'll talk about later on. And we have a thing called groups. Now, in our mixer, what we can do is we can create multiple groups. We already have a master, which controls all audio for that mixer. But what I can do is I can basically say, that master, let's create a, uh, what do we have? SFX. Yep, we've got some sound effects on our game. Uh, let's also create uh, music, because we have music in our game. Um, let's also create something crazy. Uh, Lerica, the presenter, presenting, or the person who's organizing the whole event. Um, oh yeah, I talked about like dogs. So the kind of the point is you can have lots of different mixes for basically, uh, lots of different groups for basically anything you want. You don't have to challenge to SFX or, mix or music, you can basically have a different mixer for, for anything. You can have a mixer for, I don't know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of a famous German German pop singer. Can anyone name a German pop singer? Ulu. Ulu, like, like that? Okay, I'm just going to say German pop singer. Cool. So, yeah, you can have lots of different groups. Um, now, the, the, the plus side and the downside of this is you have all your groups in, in a row, and you can view them all. However, the, if you think about, like, a, this is a small game. If you have a big game, you can have lots of many groups going all over the place. And that's really, really bad. So what we can do is we can actually, say, go into sound effects and actually create subgroups of sound effects all channeling into that one group. So what we can do is we can create another mixer, like so. Call this FSA, uh, uh, SFX Mixer. I can then assign that into the main mixer, so it's channeling into there. And then up here, we can assign a, a sound effects mixer to either German pop singer, Lerica, uh, dogs, or sound effects. So this looks a bit weird, but what we can do is we can select this top layer. We've got all the top layer groups. I'm going to remove a couple of these because uh, they don't really make sense. Uh, let's leave dogs in. So we've got the top layer, and then we, of course, also have sound effects. So inside sound effects, we can have lots of like uh, nested systems. So I can go in here, and in my game, I've got gunshots because my player shoots a gun. I can do my player because my player is going to make a little sound when he gets hit. And I can also do enemies because we've got some enemies that we want to shoot. Cool. Yeah, like I said, this is the most boring bit. Now, you, you can all have a nap for the next two minutes if that's OK. But I'll do this next bit. So when I play my game, what's going to happen? Absolutely nothing. I knew this would happen, right? Um, so basically, nothing's happening. We've set up all our groups and mixes and things like that, and sliders. However, we don't actually have anything to say, go into these sections and filter in. Because if you remember, if I went to the, that uh, PowerPoint, like so, yeah, we don't actually have anything to say, enemy roar go into sound effects, or player voice go into sound effects. So if I go back here, what we can then do is we can then go to each audio source in Unity that's creating and emitting the audio. Uh, we now have a output where we're going to send it to. And then we can easily click and select. So I'm going to send my player to player. I'm going to send my background music to background music, uh, like so. I'm going to set my, my player has a gun. And at the end of his gun, he, he shoots noises and things like that, or he makes noise. I'm going to send that into gunshots. And of course, we've got loads of different enemies. Um, so if I go to my enemies, so I've got Elephant, Zombear, and Zombunny, I can basically say, all of you, channel all your audio into enemies. So yeah, like I said, the most boring bits, but now, now that I've actually assigned and basically said, you go here, you go here, when I actually play it, you can actually see bars bouncing. If you can't really see at the back, oh, that, that'd be okay. So you can see here, and when I shoot, you can see the sound effects are popping up. And I can shoot that. Um, let me just select my sound effects. So what you can see is, as I shoot my gun, the gun shots are bouncing. If I shoot enemies, when I get hit by my player, 
So yeah, we can actually view our audio bouncing and playing and going through. That's the most boring bit of the whole talk. You can all wake up from, from earlier. Now I'm actually going to do some really cool stuff. So let's actually go in to see what this actually means. So if I go into here, um, you'll notice that we have all these different columns. This is quite self-explanatory. It's just a volume, so I can tweak this up and down and change the volume. So the, I think the music's a bit too loud, so I'm going to tone down the music a little bit. And on each of these, we also have SMB. So whatever, this does not mean Super Mario Bros or Super Meat Boy, as I stupidly asked the audio team, and they all said, no, you're a fool. Um, SMB basically means solo, mute, or bypass. So if you want to solo a particular group or, or track and you want to just get rid of everything else, you can do that. If you want to mute something, it basically will just get rid of the music. So as I'm testing my game, I can see. You can see that I can test it with just the audio. However, I can also mute this, so. Yeah, I can basically test my game and say, oh, all this. And because I was able to just go mute or solo this SFX track, that means anything that's filtering into SFX will basically get muted. So I don't have to go through like, a thousand dogs and say mute, 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 it, it, or write a script for that, I can just do that. It's really, really simple. Um, so now that we have that, let's actually start playing around with sound effects. So I have an enemy script which spawns my enemies. I'm going to turn that off so my enemies don't keep killing me because I'm actually really bad at this game. And what I want to do is I actually want to now test out the sound effects. So I think my guns basically sound really, really bad. Yeah, they sound really bad. So I'm going to go to my gun, uh, select my gun sort of group. And you can see on the right-hand side here, like like typical Unity, the inspector allows us to tweak various values. So you're going to see about a billion sliders in a second, because people uh, who use Unity seem to really like sliders. So what I can do is I can tone up, increase the pitch, and test what that sounds like. That sounds much worse. So if I actually just tone down the pitch. OK, that has a bit more punch to it. Very, very, very simple. However, that's kind of a weird workflow to basically like tweak the value and then pop into the editor and test it and tweak the value, go back into the editor and test it because you have to keep going play. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Tweak it up. That's kind of annoying. So what we decided to do with the audio mixing system is go against any traditional Unity design and um, make an edit and play mode button. So, which doesn't exist anywhere else in Unity. What a crazy, what a crazy idea. So I can actually edit in play mode and actually increase pitch. That sounds terrible. Lower my... Okay, that sounds a bit more badass, I think, but... Yeah, that sounds better. Um, and now, because we're editing play mode, we can also add various effects and actually test them in real time. So if I go to add effect, we have various built-in effects. I'm going to show if I have some time towards the end. Probably not, like lots of other like uh, different effects that you can play around with. But I can add, let's say, an echo. Oh, OK. Oops. Um, I can increase the decay, like. And here's a great bug. You can leave play mode and it keeps playing. Event. Yeah, I really like that bug. I told them not to fix that. So um, yeah, you can sort of add on an echo. Let's also have a look at, let's add a uh, high pass filter. Let's see what that actually sounds like. And because we can edit in play mode, we can pop between them. So that sounds terrible. It sounds like a rattlesnake or something. Uh, let's remove that. And let's try a low pass. OK, that sounds absolutely horrible. Um, but it basically it shows that you can pop in, you can sort of tweak things and change things and sort of play around with them. Um, so if I try, uh, let's say, distortion, Oh, okay. I'm pretty happy with that so far. So basically with that, I can then, then tweak it and change it. And because I have this B for bypass, I can actually test it. So Yeah, 
Yeah, it's got a bit more punch to it. Um, I'm just going to try one other effect because let's try uh, normalize and see what happens. Okay, that doesn't really do anything. Okay, I'll just move that. But basically, you can go and you can play around with these effects and sort of add them to different values and sort of tweak them and change them and give, give things a bit more punch or, or a bit of a tweak. Um, and in doing so, you can also play around with lots of other bits and pieces. So, yeah, that sounds kind of kick-ass. So what you can also do is you can also do ducking and dipping. So what you can see is when I... As I play, my music is still kind of staying at the same uh, level. And what I want to do is I want to duck it underneath it. So when I shoot, I have the music duck underneath it and dip it. Now, I don't want to write code for that because audio people don't like code, uh, funny enough. So what I can actually do is I can go to my sound effects and I can add a send. So I'm basically going to send uh, an effect or send something. I can go to my music and I can receive a duck. Not an actual like duck. Um, people said we should put a little icon of a duck in there, but marketing weren't, weren't too sure about that. Um, so what I can then do is I can then go to my sound effects and I can say, oh, cool. So when um, this uh, group or this mixer plays, I can send something to duck. I can increase the send value. So let's go the send value is 100%. So basically, it's going to send it completely, technically. Um, and then go into my duck, and then you'll see, hopefully, it does nothing, of course. So let's turn that down. Yeah, it does nothing. So the reason why it does nothing is because partly our send is a bit too far. So we could go around with these sliders. So like I said, a billion sliders and all this sort of like uh, information. But what you can also do is you can also go to this interface and then actually grab different sections and actually change how the duck uh, moves. So if I spike the duck. Hmm. It doesn't really seem to have much impact. Why why you no know send? Well, okay, I apologize. Okay, don't do that again. <laughs> For some reason it's not sending, I don't know. Button? Yeah, uh it shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Okay, it's not doing it. Oh well. Uh, you can download this demo and play with it yourself. So. Oh, it kind of did it then. So. It does actually dip underneath it. So if I actually increase the volume and play it up a bit. Yeah, so you can see the audio is actually playing and the music's going in the background. Yeah, so it is actually changing it. So you can actually dup it, duck it and dip it and sort of play around with how that sort of works. How much time do I left, have left, by the way? Okay, cool. Plenty of time. So um, another thing that we uh, want to play around with is we then want to take these effects and apply them in code or actually access them and change different values. So one thing I want to do is I want to say this health bar, um, as my health deteriorates, I want to then write like one line of code and basically then increase a distortion in my game because as I walk around my enemies are basically attacking me and doing various things so as I walk up to them where are my enemies so as my enemies attack me that's really really dull so what I want to do is I actually want to increase the distortion of my game so it actually factors that in and that's really, really simple to do. So what I can do is I can go to my master, because rather than distorting a certain effect, I want to distort all audio in my whole game. I can go to my master, I can go to here, and I can add, let's say, a pitch shifter. So it's basically going to modify the pitch. Now, the pitch is currently at a, a 1, whereas as I actually decrease it, so if I decrease my pitch, Yeah, so imagine playing a game and as you sort of like lose health, it gets more 
and goes down. So I want to hook that up. So what we decided to do is rather than exposing all the things, so rather than saying, OK, go to the audio mixer, go to the group, go to this, go to this, um, apply this value to this, 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 and basically have that whole sort of like really long sort of like breadcrumb, what we decided to do is we decided to allow you to select which things you want to expose, and then you can expose them very quickly. So if I go to my pitch, I can right click my pitch, and I can say expose pitch to script. Really simple. And you can see here that it then adds it to this little drop down list of all the things exposed in our game. So it's going to expose pitch. And then I can set this to be someone's name. So uh, let's think. What's your name, by the way? Carla. Carla. Okay, thank you for having a really short name. Um, so Carla. Uh, Carla, this sounds really bad, but Carla uh, hit. No, okay. Carla. Um, punch. punch. Okay, she volunteered for that. Uh, so basically, when I reference color punch, it's then going to link to that pitch. So you can then tweak that pitch for basically, uh, is it like paused or is it you know like hit by a stun grenade or something like that? So color pitch. So if I go to my player, my player has the player health script. So that's the thing that basically allows me to uh, determine if I'm hit or not. So what we decided to do is put the you expose the Unity engine to audio namespace. And because when you create a mixer, you can um, go into the mixer then creates, hang on. Um, the mixer actually creates um, an, a, proper a proper Unity asset. So you can actually just drag and drop the groups into exposed uh, variables. So you can actually reference them directly. So let's go to uh, master. So all, all the noise. So we're going to basically drop in this mixer. I can then go to my script. Um, I can then expose the, the audio mixer. No. Expose the audio mixer main mixer. If I go down, so when I uh, come back alive, I obviously want my audio to not be crazy distorted when it comes in. So all we'd need to do is we can do, what's it, Carla Punch, right? She volunteered for that to be the thing, right? It was not me who said this. Um, so we can then go to main mixer, set the float of Carla Punch to one, and then it basically sets it. So rather writing, go to the main mix, uh, get the component, go to the main mixer, do this, 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 and then apply that value, we'd rather expose it much more simply, kind of like how Mechanim does it. And then if we go down to our take damage script, we can then basically just expose that. And we can go main mixer, set flower of uh, the value that she chose. And then we can then say, go to health slide and get the value, and then divide it by the weakness. So the health is like out of 100. Um, obviously, we set our pitch to be 100. It's going to probably break everything, and it's going to sound 100 times worse. The pitch actually goes from 1 to 0, so we just like multiply it so to decrease the pitch of the pitch shifter. So once that's done, what we then need to do is go to our player, and you can see that we now have, oh, cool, we have an audio mixer hooked up. We click the little uh, little nipple, and then we go to our assets, and then we just go and hook in the SFX mixer. So then that will then come to here, go to that pitch, and then apply that. So if I then do that, wow, OK, that sounds bad, because it is already down. So let's set that to be one. So it sounds OK. I've still got my sort of crackly gunshot. It does not do. Why? Oh, OK. I hooked up the wrong mixer. Oh, it's because you gave me the German. Yeah. OK. And then if I then click here, you'll then be able to notice that that pitch then decreases over time. So uh, or whenever I get hit, so. This game sounds so demonic. Whereas beforehand, it sounded like this. It's so boring, right? Whereas if I then unbypass that, Yeah, sounds super horrible, right? But basically, it adds a lot more sort of like emphasis and kind of atmosphere on top of that. It's distorting it very, very slowly. Uh, how much time do I have? Like 10 minutes? 15. OK, cool. So I've got a couple of other bits and pieces to show you very quickly. Um, so we do also have a thing called snapshots. I can show you, show you this in a different demo. But basically, snapshots allow you to preset what affects are certain values. So if you have room A and room B, and let's say in room A it's very small, room B is very big and echoey, you can set up in room B, there is this particular echo. So I could do this like room B, 
and then let's say Rime. You could do this for either, say, individual rooms. So actually, rather room A and room B, let's do this. Room A is a uh, cellar, so it's not that echoey, whereas uh, room B would be like a ballroom, so it's actually quite echoey. So you could set up snapshots for different rooms, and as you enter that room, you just say, snapshot, transition to this. Snapshot, transition to this. So that allows you to either do this based on rooms. You could also do it based on effects. So you know who's played GTA here? Or any shooting game with stun grenades. You hear by stun grenade, it obviously goes goes into that weird pitch, like dude, like white noise, like dee. And then um, I don't know the technical term, but basically, then over time, it then transitions from that snapshot of stunned into normal. So you could do this for different states and things. I've got a much better demo that shows you that. So if I now open a different project, uh, we have here native audio plugins. So we already have out of the box um, like echo and high pass, low pass, and things like that. And if our audio team was to ship like every single possible e effect you could apply to any audio or music, they would still be making this stuff. Um, I'd still be making the first uh, release of it. So what they decided to do is they decided to go to Bitbucket. Um, and on Bitbucket, they took, um, they created a whole bunch of different native audio plugins that allow you to see how you actually control and customize your own plugins and set up different things. So you can just go here and download it, bring it into your games, play around with it, and they've got all sorts of really groovy stuff. Ignore the programmer art. These are audio people who made this. So if I then uh, run the demo, so you've got a couple of different effects here. You can see they're actually using multiple mixes for uh, each different sort of like scene um, in here. So what we can then do is we can do all sorts of really cool stuff. So weather sound means that we can... So that's an audio clip that's playing. And then uh, if I then find where wind is or weather, you can actually see sort of you know how these things are bumping up and down. And you can also see um, we've got here parameter equalizer. We've got stereo widener. We have all sorts of sort of different um, effects to play around with that have basically been custom made for these demos. So we have a noise box, a uh, impulse generator, a wah wah as well, whatever a wah wah may be. Um, we also have different things like let's say. Uh, So basically how you'd sort of like manipulate that one sound and change it between different sort of vowels to simulate vowels and things. Uh, we also have, let's say, like a 3D fractal demo. Uh, I remember that one doesn't work. Uh, water drops. So, so basically it plays the same asset over and over and it basically then modifies it to be different water drops. So rather than having to tell your audio person, hey, can you make a thousand water drops for me, please? And then they just sort of quit their job. You can basically bring in one and then modify it into different ways. So if I then find the water, you can then see the bumpingness. But I can't find the water. Oh, that's okay, that's fine. Um, we also have, let's say, um, impacts. So it plays the same sort of sound effect, but modifies it based on you know velocity of the rigid body, how it hits something at a certain angle and stuff. So rather than making a different sound effect for all those things, which is near impossible, and then also... So yeah, same sound effect, and it's then like sort of modifying them very slightly. We also have, say, like swords. Like This is one sound effect, too. And you can actually see here that they've created like, you know, a modif modal fire. And you can actually see that as I... Just by exposing that, they can then change the random seed for the audio and how it's modifying it. That sounds like pots and pans, not really swords. Um, here's me singing this. I recorded this this morning. So yeah, it's basically... It's basically getting the pitch and then seeing how you can then take those values and then apply them to, say, you know, video sort of like displays and things like that. And you can also record the microphone like, and this is sort of working, I think, yeah, maybe. Yep, it sort of works. So you can actually see it bouncing up and down and getting the live uh, microphone in. Obviously this is bouncing from here to here, to here to here and stuff like that, but you can actually see it's taking in that live data. Um, and there's even someone in, um, 
there's even someone in like Amsterdam who's like using Unity for like video jockey and displays and stuff to actually take in the crowd and then sort of feed that all in, which is actually really cool. Um, and then we also have like a walkie-talkie type thing. And they've even created like, you know, a walkie-talkie equalizer. Whereas if I like mute that. Hello, Ed, again. Welcome to the So that's where it sounds like normal then. So yeah, they're basically modifying it. So you could take all these effects and apply them to different things. Um, I'll show you all the sort of those different effects that they throw in. So you've got all sorts of things you can play around with. Spatializers, if you want to do, if you do anything VR and you need to like make sounds appear from where they are, we have the spatializer sort of demo to show you how to do that. Vocorders, all sorts of really sort of fun stuff to play around with. Um, the spatializer one doesn't actually work on like a laptop unless you have headphones in or you're in VR and things like that. So yeah. Um, and sort of like one last demo I'd like to show you is uh, this techno demo. So they've decided to take sort of like this system and then allows you to mix different audio and then it applies it to a particle system. So you see here we have a music mixer. We've got a full mixing panel. And on the side, they basically use um, snapshots for different sort of like areas of the song. So for the intro, for the breakdowns, for the build-ups and stuff, and you can transition from one to another. So you can actually see that at different stages, the uh, bars are going to be at different levels, and they're going to go. De so for like the build up, it's going to then drop down, and then it's going to then shoot back up when it goes into the song. So if I actually open up that scene, um, let's start at everything at zero, so I can actually show you that. Okay, everything is now at zero. So then what you can then do is you can see there's a particle system just sort of like bubbling there. And then the script is then basically feeding that data into the particle system to modify it. So you can see here. So yeah, it's taking in all the audio and then that sort of like trickle. And then the, yeah, it's basically playing. And then. I'm sorry, audio people. I actually hate techno music, but this is kind of cool. Uh. Yeah, so you can basically then mix it and change it to different things. So, like I said with the snapshots, watch this. So, as I click a different element, It should work. Why is it? Oh, yeah, I'm in edit. You can actually see it transitioning very slowly to different sort of like states. So, yeah, so you can basically have snapshots and transition and phase to different things. Um, so, and that's pretty much sort of like the end of that. So, yeah, so new features, we have the mixing interface where you can actually view different audio and see how they're playing. Mixes and groups, so you can actually segment things into different sections and control lots of different audio. So I was like applying that pitch shifter to all audio in the whole game very quickly, right? Applying it to everything. Um, way more effects and you can extend them yourself or just take the ones from Bitbucket and play around with them. Uh, ducking as well, which is very simple. So game state snapshots and you can expose pretty much anything to scripts. Um, so what now? So we've done a whole bunch of tutorials on how to actually use this stuff. So if you said, oh, Andy explained this thing well, but he kind of rushed through this thing here. Um, he needs more time to do this stuff or whatever. Um, you can actually go to our tutorial section. And if you look under here with uh, audio, so where's audio? With this ear. We then basically got all these things bite-sized. So you don't have to sit through like a five-hour tutorial video where some, this person spends the first hour saying, hey guys, I'm uh, recording this uh, video and I ate cereal this morning or something, which is pretty much every tutorial there is. Um, we decided to break it into little slots. So if you said, hey, Andy didn't really explain snapshots that well, but I get the duck volume, you go into snapshots and there is a video of like, what, five minutes, 10 minutes? Yeah. Okay, 12 minutes where it basically just goes through that specific thing. So. You don't have to watch, you know, like five hours of footage. You can kind of jump into different areas. Um, we also have the uh, the example assets. So like that that sort of techno sort of like beat and changing that and phasing between different values. We have that, which you can uh, like download and play around, experiment, pull it apart, put things together. 
um, take, to, take to a rave night. I don't know what people do these days. Um, and we also have all those different demos, which basically like, have the sword slashing and like the water drops. And we even have the little boy shooting zombies as another thing. Uh, we also developed loads of developer blog posts. So I think one of our developers, all our developers who made this came from audio backgrounds. So they basically blogged about not only how, like, sort of how they made it, but like why they made it or how they designed it in this particular way. Um, and we also have Unity Labs, which is kind of a big lab environment you can walk around, and they show switching between different mixes at certain points, because some rooms echo more, some rooms are a bit more tinny, and various things like that. And that's basically the end. Uh, rather than questions, I'd rather the next person sort of came up and... I don't think we have time for questions. If, some, if the next person who's giving a talk can set up, and then maybe I'll stand to the side and we ask questions there, or... Oh, there's time. Oh, sorry. I was kind of rushing. Um, has anyone got any questions? Go for it. Uh, hey there, thank you for the presentation. Um, I wanted to ask if there's still a non-destructive way to play around, around with your um, audio mixes and stuff like that. Because normally in Unity you hit play, you can delete your scene, whatever, move everything, hit play again, everything's back to normal. But in this case, if I now go into play mode, right? Sure. Edit play mode. I don't know. I change a few sliders and then notice uh, it doesn't feel that good. I, if I switch off play mode, the settings still apply, right? Uh, currently, yes. So, I'm, of course, I could revert from SVN or Git or something like that, but is there an in-editor way to do non-destructive testing? Yeah, um, this is something that we're working on, and it's actually un-audio related. Um, uh, yeah, I'll show it, it's okay. So basically, we're working on a, a feature like save and play mode. It's on our roadmap, so it's okay. Um, which basically allows you to record sort of like what's happening in your game. And if you make any manual changes, you can then uh, maintain those changes on runtime or revert back to them, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. So like as a super simple demo, so I've got my really, really complex AAA environment like here. Um, and then I also have a light as well in my scene. So what I can then do is... Uh, Go to my game, and then let's say I'm, I'm paused in play mode, and let's say I'm in play mode, and I'm like, hmm, my goblin, yeah, for all intents and purposes, this is a goblin, okay, um, can then uh, be a bit wider and sort of like rotate a little bit or something like that, and then it looks all okay. And then let's say my directional light um, needs to be a point light instead, and then I also need to make it like a bit taller, and then I need to make it red. Obviously, if you leave play mode, that's then going to forget all those changes, and the same if you make things with like the audio mixer. But currently, when you edit in play mode with the audio mixer, it then maintains those changes. Although, what would be quite cool is like a revert button to what it was before you clicked edit in play mode. But I can always like tell the audio developers plus one for that or something. Um, but like with this demo here, what you can see is I've made a couple of changes. Like the cube is no longer like that, and the light is now red. Um, the idea of this, okay, this feature is like pre-alpha, so if everything goes wrong, just don't record it. <laughs> oh, it actually works, cool. So we now have like the little button which basically say, okay, what were those changes? You can click that. Okay, you can see, do you want to ignore those changes that were made in play mode, or do you want to then apply them to everything? So that's like the, the granddaddy apply all those changes. So these are manual changes, not scripting changes. So if you do script to say, move your character left four spaces, it's not really going to take that because that's more like a scripting thing. This is more like any manual tweaks you made. Um, we also have here, like next to the game objects, like a little like apply button. So you can apply it for the whole game object. So I can go to my cube and just say, Okay, the button doesn't work. I told you it's pre-alpha. But what we can do is we can also go here and we can see next to this component, this, this is the thing changed. If I hover over it, it'll say what it was changed to. And we can then go, and then it'll remember basically what's happening in play mode. And the same thing with this light. So if I light, I can then apply, change its position so it moved, make it red, so it will make it red. And then basically it'll remember those changes. So this is currently being rolled out for like any manual changes in Unity, but it's not there yet. It's on our roadmap, but we haven't, there's a lot, all sorts of complications that come with this, like this is currently moving a cube, and we want to test it with like a big scene or lots of different crazy things, or how many things can we change before things get bad um, or things get a bit funky. So yeah, we're still working on this feature. I don't think we've shown it off, so. Yeah, it looks very interesting. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Um, uh, that actually more than answered my question. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, that's, that's handy, right? <laughs> Cheers. You could, uh, one thing you could do, I guess, is 
duplicate your mixer asset, but that's kind of a hacky way of doing it. You have to it. reapply every audio source in the mixer, or yeah. you, you would have to have a separate copy, change the GORD maybe, that would work, but. Yeah, okay. Can you undo in the edit mode? Uh, what do you mean? Like, can you just hit Control Z when you're editing? It'll no, go no, unfortunately not. Although that'd be quite cool. So you almost need like a rollback button for any edit mode that was done in playtime, because obviously if you're already not in playtime and then you edit and tweak things, you can just undo the from there, but in play yeah. mode, not. I'll make a note of that. So, but this revert feature that you just showed off is probably not working for assets, right? Which uh, audio mixer is? It's only in scene objects. Uh, it should. It's not finished yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I use code to hang on. I use Sublime for all notes. So, uh, what like uh, undo play mode changes made to mix. So I don't know why I'm reading out. You guys can read. And do play changes me to make so. Um, when I'll remember what that means. Look, and it's even highlighted out for some reason. Cool. It's awesome. sharp. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. There is. Thanks. Um, did you um, discuss? Possible features with uh, a audio community, or did you get requests from developers before um, yeah, making up all this, or um, how was your approach on um, yeah getting all those features, this this feature set you were talking about? Yeah, so it's a combination of um, our audio team who have worked on I think they worked on like FMOD and various other sort of audio systems, not in Unity or game engines, but from elsewhere. It was partly from their background. It was also partly from like internal testing and internal development and things like that for any of our demos we've made in the past without these tools. And it was also working with various companies to basically find out what they need or what they wanted or sort of like what their workflow. We do have other sort of like audio features that we're working on to basically take this first iteration and then develop it further and things like that. But um, that's based off of the feedback of the, this feature set. So it's apparently came from outside game companies, our internal sort of content teams, and then like the people who made them and stuff. So there's a whole range of people. And there's still people who are saying, oh yeah, this, this, this stuff's cool. It's easier to actually do audio stuff than before, but we wanted this, this, this. And it's a case that we wanted to put this version one out and then iterate on top of that to basically see exactly what the trend was. Because it's like with any game or feature, if you want to implement everything you ever want in a game, it will never get shipped. It's just feature creep happens. And when you're making engine tools, feature creep happens very frequently, apparently. <laughs> so, and uh, did you um, get requests from customers of uh, audio guys who are using Unity from yeah. the community? Um, I guess there, there, there must be one. <laughs> must be one, yeah. Um, yeah, we did. So we spoke to, like, uh, I don't know, like, who I can say or what I can say because it's all sign stuff. Um, but we spoke to basically people who are either, like, work in audio teams who just never, like, touch engine tools and stuff to say, hey, what would make your life much easier? And they're like, oh yeah, we'd like to be able to do this, 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 this. And then also people who are making like games with audio, like focus in Unity and stuff like that, actually to say, hey, what could make your life much better and stuff. So yeah, um, I don't exactly have a list because these tools yeah, were no, kind of, of, course, of course. yeah. Uh, but yeah, we did our research, as with anything that we do. <laughs> yeah, of course. Or any company does. Pretty cool features, so thanks. Cool. What would be your number one request though? As one of the audio, only audio people in the, um, in the room. I think that pretty much covers um, pretty much. <laughs> and m more later, <laughs> I guess. All right, I'll email that. Pretty much covers pretty much more later. Okay. Yeah. No, because um, I myself, we were de developing an um, interactive music engine for, okay. well, since 2007. We're working on it. And uh, we. Um, offer it um, with Unity, so we ported it f uh, to Unity, and uh, so it's pretty interesting for me. Uh, maybe think, think about, um, combine it with the mixer uh, features cool. and so on. That'd be really sweet. Yeah. But maybe I have a question later on. 
<laughs> yeah, the, um, I'm going to be around um, like today and tomorrow, probably wandering around playing the. Has anyone seen the chicken game, the chicken jump game with the pads? So if you go out there, so I'm pimping out. Sorry, I'm pimping out someone else's game. So you, they have this game and they've got like these foam pads, and you stand on the pads, and then you have to jump over cars that like come down the street. And I played it for like five minutes, and I was already really tired. So if you want a good workout at a games conference, which is actually incredibly rare to have. Um, Go play that game. <laughs> okay, thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy, for the insightful talk um, and the demo on, on all the features um, Unity has to offer on our audio right now. So um, stay tuned. We will have um, next on a talk from VK. But before I let you go, um, please fill out this form and, and rate Andy and his talk and um, hand this out to our, to our volunteer and then come back to the next talk. Thank you. Um, if you give me a 10 out of 10, I'll give you free stickers. And some free DevGam t-shirts they're giving out somewhere else. <laughs>